Intervertebral disc disease, or IVDD, is the most common cause of neck and back pain in dogs. The condition occurs when the intervertebral discs that provide the spine with flexibility and protection against impact dry out and become brittle, leading to rupture. These ruptured discs are commonly referred to as a slipped or herniated disc and may cause pain, limited mobility, or even paralysis. In some cases, IVDD can be managed non-surgically. However, without timely and appropriate treatment, it can cause irreversible damage to the spinal cord. If your dog is showing signs of spinal pain or limited mobility, it is important to consult a veterinary neurologist immediately. Three primary symptoms of IVDD include pain, which can present as holding the head low, arching the back, holding the ears back, panting excessively, not wanting to move, muscle spasms, shivering or crying, limited mobility, such as wobbling, incoordination, weakness, or paw knuckling when walking, or paralysis, which can show as dragging limbs, being unable to stand, unable to walk or use their limbs, as well as urinary and fecal incontinence. In severe cases, they may be unable to feel their toes. Since other neurological disorders can look like a slipped disc, only a veterinary neurologist will be able to evaluate your dog thoroughly enough to determine the source of symptoms. MRI is the best way to analyze the spinal cord, rule out other possibilities, and accurately diagnose IVDD. Treatment for IVDD varies from a period of strict rest to surgical intervention. First-time sufferers with mild symptoms may be conservatively managed with a combination of rest, pain medications, anti-inflammatory medications, and muscle relaxants. This is also an option for patients that cannot undergo MRI due to health concerns, financial reasons, or owner preference. Medications will generally follow a tapering schedule over a few weeks, while rest and limited activity will continue for several more weeks, depending on the neurological signs. The most important part of medical management is the rest. Rest gives cartilage a chance to scar over and heal so that it doesn't get worse and hopefully will get better over time. A crate is typically necessary to achieve this. Your dog should remain crated at all times, only being carried or taken out with a sling or short leash to urinate, defecate, or for physical therapy when the time comes. Here are some guidelines to succeed in conservative management. One. A metal crate with a top is recommended to allow your dog to see out and you to see in while preventing your dog from tearing it, knocking it over, or climbing and jumping out. Two, the appropriate crate size is two to three times the size of your dog so that your dog can stand up, turn around, and move away from an accident, but can't run, jump, or stand on their hind legs. Three, we recommend a foam mattress with a plastic cover for easy cleaning. You can use towels or blankets over this. Bedding should be soft, clean, and dry at all times. Four, choose a location for the crate that best allows your dog to stay calm. Sometimes having multiple crates throughout the house is helpful. Five, your dog will be eating and drinking in the crate. Raised or attached crate bowls can be helpful. Because your dog will be resting, they probably will not eat as much as they normally do. And six, crates are boring. While we want your dog to rest, sometimes a favorite toy can help them relax. Use your judgment. If the toy causes too much excitement, remove it. Your veterinary neurologist may prescribe additional medication if your dog is too anxious during confinement. We do not recommend the use of a back brace. There is no evidence or reason that it would be helpful, and in fact, it may even be harmful. Medication and rest are the cornerstones of conservative therapy. Prognosis for medically managed IVDD depends on the degree and duration of neurological symptoms. Dogs with mild neurological signs that can still walk can have a 60 to 70% chance of functional recovery. Dogs that are unable to walk but can still move their legs have about a 50 to 60% chance of returning to normal function. The prognosis for paralyzed dogs is guarded, with only 50% of dogs recovering the ability to walk with fecal and urinary continence. Alternatively, these same dogs have about a 95% chance of making a full recovery with a surgical intervention. So while many dogs treated conservatively can recover, the time to recover is longer, completeness of recovery is less, 
and recurrence of clinical signs is higher than with surgically treated dogs. It will be apparent whether or not conservative management is effective within the first week of treatment. If your dog is still having episodes of pain, symptoms aren't getting better or symptoms are getting worse, it's time to talk about doing an MRI to see what's really going on.